Well, how to, how you do guys? I'm Rusty. I'm a full-time reseller. I've got a little video today to show you the stuff we've sold in March. We sold 77 items. Uh, I'm not going to show you all those, but I'll pick some out. Why don't you come on in with us? Take a look. Oh, what did I buy and what did I sell? I'll share my secrets if you promise not to tell. I'm going to take you down, uh, a road here for a little bit. Uh, that road being March of 2021. Uh, I'm going to look at all the stuff uh, that we sold. Not all of it, but a lot of them. Uh, and I really want to talk to you about uh, some of the things that we sold here. I'm going to go one item at a time. I'm going to do somewhere around 25 items. <clears throat> this month we did 77 items uh, sold this month. Um, and we did a total of $9,956 in eBay sales on this particular store. So that comes out to be about $129 per item average that we sold. Um, but let's get right into it here, guys. To start off, we have this 1941 vintage Regal Dobro. Uh, on some of the shorts and some of these videos, you can hear uh, a jingle uh, utilizing this, uh, this uh, Dobro here. Quite nice, um, it was fun, super fun to play. Um, but I've got another one, so this one was okay to let it go. Sold this for $950. <clears throat> I probably spent around 700 on it when I bought it. So not only did I get some good use out of it, but I also turned a little bit of a profit there. Next up, we got this 10 karat solid gold ring uh, set. Just a lot of tiny little rings. Um, Let's see, 120, 150, yeah. So I believe I bought each of these rings for 25 bucks. So about $150 was spent on these rings. Um, and they were, all of them were 10 karat solid gold. That means 10% of them was gold, uh, was, uh, uh, was, uh, was gold there. Uh, so, um, they, uh, they sold here pretty easily. 227 had 36 bids, so. Anytime a gold, gold scrap, silver, silver scrap actually sells pretty fast. Here we got a World War II Navy uh, pilot wings and shield. This is a, a pin. <clears throat> and if I kind of click on some of these here, you can see the back of it. It's just a pin. Um, and this was not particularly made out of any sort of precious metal, although it was gold toned. But just because of the time period, uh, 1050. I think I spent about. 10 to 15 cents on this so uh you know ten dollars is not a ton of money but when you're spending so little on something then it, it really it really adds up quick um here was a nice just a, a sterling silver chain uh it said it was marked italy um and it was right at about 53 grams so a heavy sucker and um that thing as you can see got 25 bids and uh again silver stuff <clears throat> excuse me can sell quite nicely uh, a lot of people interested in that. Here was a beauty. I spent about $430 on this ring when I bought it. About an 8 carat, um, uh, no, sorry, 12.6 carat uh, star ruby. If you flashed a little light on that, you would see um, it would make a little star. Um, you can even see the uh, picture of me with my phone taking a picture of it in the, in the background there. Pretty awesome. Uh, then you can see those beautiful diamonds, <clears throat> 14 karat gold ring. Sold that for $700. Uh, made a couple hundred dollars profit off of that. Quite nice. The next few I'm going to show you here, guys, um, are per pins, service pins. I bought a lot of all the ones I'm about to show you and many more in a little baggie for $10 at an estate sale. They were, um... They were all different types of pins. Uh, a lot of them were railroad uh, or air, you know, airline oriented, but then there were some others as well. Um, what they didn't realize, the people putting these together, were that several of them were gold filled. That means that they uh, have some sort of a base metal and alloy, but then they are dipped <clears throat> in a certain type of gold. So it'll tell you 1 20th 10 karat gold or, uh, you know, 1 10th 14 karat gold. And that's telling you. Um, you know, a percentage of that is that carat weight gold. So if it's 1 10th, 14 carat, then, uh, you know, 10% of it is 14 carat gold. Uh, in this particular case we're looking at here to start, this was a 10 carat solid gold uh, piece. So it's made of gold and uh, it had two little emeralds, as you can see right there, set in it. And this thing sold for $23.37. If this had been the only one I would have sold, out of that entire lot of probably 15 or 20, 25 of these pins, uh, I would have made a profit. 
This is beautiful. When you buy a lot and you make not only your money back, but a profit on the sale of one or just a couple of the items, this is just, uh, this is gold, you know, solid gold in this case. $23, you had 10 bids. And the next one is one for the TWA. This is uh, an airline oriented one. <clears throat> 10 karat gold lapel pin also has an emerald as you can see in it right there. This one sold for $4.75. At this point, cost of goods is taken care of. All I'm getting is profit here. Of course, I got to save my taxes and my fees to eBay, but uh, otherwise really nice. Next one up is a 20 year um, service pin. So if someone had worked for this company for 20 years, it's a, a railroad pin. Again, it's got an emerald in it. So it's made of partly of gold, 10 karat gold, and it's got an emerald. So it's precious metal and a precious gemstone. $27 and 10 bids. Guys, I mean, out of my $10 spent on this bag, I'm probably going to put in my pocket after uh, fees and everything, over $200 on all of these. Not all of them have sold yet, but, um, but several of them sold real nicely this month. Here's some shoes. You know, I started out doing shoes a lot more uh, used shoes than I do now. I still do higher end Nike shoes when I get a chance. But um, here was some leftover uh, from last year and I reduced the price on them uh, to start off just to try to move them out the door. This one sold for $41 plus the paid me shipping on that. I think I paid somewhere around $18 to $20 on these. So not a big profit at all, but I was happy to get it out and, and get some space here at the warehouse. Uh, next one up here is a tennis racket. <clears throat> I bought from a local thrift store 54 antique tennis rackets for approximately $45. So less than a dollar per racket. So <clears throat> this racket sold for $21.50. The next set of rackets, two of them, uh, sold for $18.01. I had already sold three other rackets out of this lot and out of those three rackets initially I had already paid myself back and was in profit. So both of these I'm not having to consider my cost because just like that lot of pins I've already paid myself back and uh, you know most of the stuff I've got at the warehouse right now guys is paid for. <clears throat> I have already made my investment back in a lot of cases I've already made profit and I have all this stuff left to sell that is just going to be profit, which is nice. The next one, I'm going to tell you a quick story about this one. This is a turquoise beaded necklace, sterling silver. I sold this thing on eBay <clears throat> and I had uh, about three weeks go by and heard nothing. Then all of a sudden I get an email from, uh, from the person, uh, very hateful, very uh, aggressive in the tone, calling me a fraud and a crook and that I was just trying to cheat them and that this, there's no way, this is made out of plastic and uh, I'm a gemologist and I used to be a lawyer and all this stuff. <clears throat> and uh, demanding that I send them a full refund, including their, sh their uh, shipping cost. And I was very uh, cordial and nice, and I, when I responded back, I just said, I'm very sorry that you're unhappy with this. Um, I'm happy to, uh, to issue you a full refund if you send it back in the same condition. And they came back uh, even, even, you know, madder than ever, uh, hitting me with a bunch of, you know, there's no way I'm going to put another dime in the pocket of a person who willingly committed fraud and um, this and that. And I, I, if you don't pay me back within 12 hours, I'm going to report you to the police and this sort of stuff. And uh, again, I went back and said, I'm so, I'm so sorry again that you uh, are unsatisfied, um, but I'm very happy to, uh, to take that back, give you a refund. I'll resell it to somebody else who, who will like it. This went back and forth. Eventually, I just said, "Listen, I've I've said my piece. Uh, if you uh, if uh, if you are willing to send it back to me, I'll give you a refund. If not, I don't know what else to to tell you." And so, they eventually did <clears throat> issue a, a return or, or set up to say they're going to do the return. But before I even received it back, they hit me with a very hateful uh, uh, feedback comment: "Criminal." willingly committed fraud do not buy it any you know at you know at your own risk or whatever and uh i almost never have negative feedback uh and so i uh it was it hurt you know it hurt to ha have that uh, people look at the store and they're a little bit they want i don't want people to be skeptical about stuff i'm selling so uh i didn't know you could do that while you were actively in the process of working things out that somebody could leave you negative feedback but apparently ebay allows that um so anyhow Long story short, I got the item back. It was in the same condition. I did issue the refund, <clears throat> but that negative review sat there and I waited a few days. I reported it to eBay through the online portal. Never heard nothing. So yesterday I called eBay up 
customer support. And I said to them exactly the story I just said to you. And I said, I'm going to ask kindly that you remove this from uh, this negative feedback because I did everything within my power to resolve the issue in a timely manner. I was cordial in my uh, communication. And also, um, I resolved the issue the best I can. And I was trying to follow eBay's policies, even though this buyer was, uh, was demanding that I do something other than what eBay wants. And the lady was very nice on the phone uh, with eBay customer support. And within one day, I got an email saying that they had removed that. So thank you, eBay. I know it's a real hot thing to do right now to put all these YouTube videos out talking about how much eBay sucks and I'm not going to quit eBay and I just quit eBay and this is why. And like, I get it, guys. There's some things about eBay I don't like either, particularly some of the methods and, and the, the amounts of money that they take from me when I sell things. But you know what? At the end of the day, they're giving me a platform to reach lots of people and sell stuff. So thank you, eBay. I want to be, I don't want to be following that trend. I want to say thank you for giving me an ability to work from my home and have freedom in my life uh, to sell things. And so I don't know if you're listening out there, uh, but if you are, uh, I appreciate you helping me out uh, and supporting me as a seller. So sorry, off the, so, sorry I went off on that little side uh, business there, but I want to tell you, you can sometimes run into scammers. I would, com I would consider that person a scammer. I think that they were, they were hoping they could bully me into giving them a refund without getting the item back. Um, but I was just, I've had enough experience on, on this platform to know that, uh, I can't be pushed around like that. And so, uh, anyhow, if anyone tries to do that to you, do not give in, be, be, uh, you know, kill them with kindness, uh, you know, treat them as you would want to be treated. And, and then if it doesn't go your way, uh, you know, reach out to eBay. They got a, a setup there to try to help you. Okay. Finally, moving on. Uh, this was a vintage Hamilton 14 karat gold, uh, wristwatch that I bought, um, for $10 at an estate sale. Uh, they did not realize that it was, uh, was gold plated or gold rolled. Um, and so, you know, I got seven bids on this sucker. It did not even work. It was not functioning. So somebody wanted it to either melt it down for the gold or they were going to repair it and resell it and good for them. Okay, the next couple I'm excited about, I just got these uh, this month. <clears throat> uh, this one right here was Mandalorian uh, Season 1 trading cards, and they were in these tins uh, that were the shape and look of Mandalorian mask, which was quite, quite cool looking. Uh, I bought two of them. Uh, I believe I paid, paid $80 per box. So $160 is quite an investment, but uh, you know I already saw that they were selling well online. So uh, I bought these. <clears throat> And I was like, okay, $160. Should I put $100 more? $260? No, I'll put $300. I'll let them sit a while. I put these stinkers on there, and within four hours, they sold as a buy it now for $300. So uh, I made about $100 same day uh, from buying this. So I was really excited about that. That was the only two in the store, and I went back. They didn't have any. I guess they're, you know, maybe that's why they're so valuable, is that there are not a lot out there. Um, well, let's see. Did I. I guess I missed the next one. There was a, well, we'll get to it in a minute. Uh, okay, moving on, in order here, uh, not to get uh, distracted. We got this, another one of these pins, guys. This was the big kicker. Again, this was in that same bag, that $10 bag, a vintage TW Airline Wings Globe pin. Uh, this one is also gold filled, so 1 20th of it um, was 10 karat gold filled. It was quite a large pin. Uh, I did not sell this for $175. I took a best offer for $150. But $150, guys, I'd already made my money back on the other ones. This was just money coming in. Uh, super excited to have that sale. Then we had some stuff that I've had sitting around for a long time. I bought a binder of old 90s basketball cards maybe a year ago, and I've been slowly selling some of those off. I broke it up, and uh, here were some Jordan cards. It didn't have these uh, sent off to be graded, although they were in really good condition. They were the same one. Uh, kind of an iconic look there of Jordan with his tongue out and he's dunking on some, uh, you know, some poor old guy. And uh, $31 for these three cards, eight bids. Guys, if you know much about uh, the value of cards from the 80s and 90s, uh, you'll be impressed with me getting $32 off of these three cards. It's because it's Michael Jordan, but they mass produce those cards. So many of them are worth almost nothing, which is unfortunate because that's when I was trading those baseball cards back in that time. Uh, here we have a nice lot of sterling silver jewelry, uh, 56 grams worth. It's also got some various little gemstones in there, some onyx I see, some carnelian, and some earrings there. Most of these were tarnished heavily, damaged, broken, or missing a piece, or just didn't seem like the kind of thing that, that if I put it up by itself, would sell for for jewelry to be worn, although this could be worn. And, uh, you know, 56 grams, 
paid $41 for 56 grams. The price of silver per gram, you know, I'm noticing that you're going to get usually a little over half, um, like dollar amount, a little over half of what the gram amount is. So um, if this were 60 grams, uh, I would, ex or 56 to 60 grams, I was expecting to get somewhere in the $40 range. So obviously if it was 60 grams, $30 would have been half. Um, so a little more than half is right now with the price of silver is about what you're getting. <clears throat> this little uh, 2019 Lee Max Villages collection, these are little miniatures. Uh, I bought this for $2 at uh, a local Goodwill, and within two weeks I sold it for $18 plus $8 shipping. So uh, I might have even made a dollar, not intentionally, but I think it only cost between six and seven dollars to ship that. So um, that was a good little flip. The next two, I believe, yes. The next two I bought last week at uh, a local antique store. It's actually an antique store I sell stuff at. So it was another vendor in there. They have both of these for sale for $10 each. Um, and they said on the thing, uh, you know, coral question mark. I got these things out and I examined them and sure enough, they both were uh, what they call angel skin coral, which is a pink coral, highly sought after. So this one right here sold in the first, uh, first seven day auction for $41. Again, I paid 10 for it. The next one sold for $20. Uh, only had one bid there, but this was more of an orange color. It was braided, not as nice. Uh, I like the clasp on that one, but not as nice as this. So I turned you know $20 investment into $62, uh, something like that. Here's a lot of larger, these were, I guess, uh, it says, yeah, uh, four times. I think those were out by, around five by seven size. Um, but these were a collection of black and white photographs that someone took on a vacation back in the 1930s, around 1938, I believe, 30s, 38 or 39, uh, on the SS Columbia steamer ship. It was a cruise ship, and there's pictures here of the captain and the ship and them, uh, you know, in bathing suits out swimming and sitting around on the deck just having a good old time. Uh, I bought a huge lot of these, and I tried to sell them all at once. Didn't sell, so I've broken them up in smaller lots. So this was the first of that. 18 of those sold for 40 bucks. Um, I stuck them in one of those flat rate envelope mailers and sent it off that way. Moving on here, we're down. We've, we've made it down to March 21st here so far, which is just a few days ago. Uh, I bought this at a local uh, thrift store for 25 cents, and this is a Disney Pixar Cars uh, little, little truck. And it's, man, I was, I was, uh, I was, I knew it would sell. I just did. I was very surprised and happy. Again, 25 cent investment. Uh, sold it for twenty dollars and fifty cents. Twenty four bids on this. It must have been a harder to find one. It was in good condition. It was a small little car, um, but I was very excited about that. Here we are with the beautiful vintage Schaefer fountain pens. Uh, some of these old pens, sometimes you'll find them in baggies of other ink pens and pencils or things. Certain brands uh, can sell uh, really, really well. Schaefer's one of them. If you're looking at higher end, like Mont Blanc and some of those, some people don't even realize uh, that they're valuable. Some of them can have actually gold filled or gold plated um, uh, components on them. Um, and so like this, this lot right here too, I bought in a larger lot of probably 200 ink pens. I paid $35 for that 200 ink pens and these two sold for $78. These are these were uh, actual um, old fountain pens. And uh, a lot of people just throw these out or they'll give them away because they're like, ah, I'm not using an ink well and I'm not you know filling these up and they don't even work anymore. Well, it doesn't matter if they work. Some people collect these no matter what. So 26 bids. Uh, super happy about that. Made all my money back on that lot. Now we got a pair of earrings. These were just gorgeous. Uh, I don't wear earrings, <laughs> you know, but uh, I really thought these were cool. The, the filigree, uh, you know, construction of these was actually quite impressive, and you can see they're beautiful. They're uh, amethyst here, and uh, if I can go down to the bottom here, yep, if I click on this and zoom in, you can see that it says Siam Sterling. Siam is what uh, they used to call a country that is now called Thailand was Siam, and um, it was like in the 30s, maybe, whenever that name changed. So I knew that since these were marked Siam, that they were, these were pre that time. So these were 1920s, 1930s earrings made out of sterling silver. I cleaned them up a little bit, uh, but these were just pretty little things. Uh, quite large, it would cover your whole earlobe. Um, I paid $15 for them, sold them for 40 
Now we got this vintage 14 karat yellow gold. It was a, a necklace with this pendant that was like leaves and carved again that angel skin coral. It looks like a rose there uh, carved out of coral. Uh, I paid $30 for this at a local estate sale I go to twice a month. Uh, sold for $102.50, seven bids. So, you know, 70 bucks more than I paid for it. Uh, take that all day, every day. Okay, here were the cards I was looking for earlier. I bought this box, a sealed box of Bowman Draft. This is from last year. Uh, it's a draft class. Um, I paid, I think, $399 for this box. And I sold it uh, within two weeks for $629. So uh, $200 or so, $229 flip. And I'll, you know, put 150 of that in my pocket. Um, so super happy about that. And then finally, this one was also exciting. I bought this lot at the same time, the same day, and those baseball cards. I paid probably $1,600 at this uh, card shop in one day. And, uh, you know, I was sort of sweating on the way home, but it, it has all worked out within one week. I've got these. This is a... I've done shorts on all of these. If you go back to the YouTube channel and look, you can see right after I bought them, I talked about them. But these are this new edition uh, Star Wars cards called the Signature Series. There's only one card per box, and it has a signature on it from some member of the Star Wars cast, one of the actors who played a character. And so um, I paid right at $100. Uh, for each of these boxes. So $600 for this lot, and I turned around and sold it within one week for $799, $800. So again, I'm putting $100, $150 in my pocket within one week. Uh, this is the best case scenario, guys, regardless of how much money you spend, is to sell it within seven days, make your investment back, and make profit. Uh, that These are the types of sales that really keep the warehouse moving and going. Um, so keep a lookout, guys. The Star Wars, the baseball cards... Pokemon, uh, Bakugan, um, Dungeons and Dragons, a lot of Magic the Gathering. If you can find these cards, you at used, you know, at, at thrift stores, uh, cheaper prices, guys, pick them up. Pick them up, I, I beg you, because uh, they are selling like hotcakes. I mean, into la into last year and into this year, I don't. I think that there's a drop in production as part of it, it so the demand is still there, but there's not as many to go around. Uh, but uh, but people are selling them. Then the last thing, guys, I wanted to show you. I'm not going to zoom in necessarily. Well, I might zoom on on one or two of these, but I just wanted to show you uh, kind of lastly here that I am a one week removed from buying my lot of like 40,000 plus uh, matchbooks and matchbook covers. I paid $600 on this lot and within the first week, let's see, there's six of them here that I show sold. Three more sold yesterday, but I haven't received the, the money from it yet. So uh, actually, no, there's seven here. One, two, three, four. So seven, eight, nine, ten. I've sold 10 within a week and I, add, I totaled it up uh, the total money from these 10 has been $257.22. So I calculated that in a percentage calculator. I've already made back 42.8% of my investment within seven days on that lot. So I have 40,000 plus matchbooks. I sold 10 of them for nearly 50% of my investment back. So I expect that within the next week, I listed probably 40 more yesterday. I've got maybe 75 up. I expect that by next week, my entire investment will be back to me. And then I've got still 40,000 matchbooks to sell to make, uh, to make some profit on. So again, I got to keep out my, my 25% standard that I keep back for taxes. I've also got to keep back, um, the money or the 13 to 14 percent, uh, which is that's a little high, but 13 and a half percent for uh, eBay managed payments and all that, uh, the fees. Uh, but I'm just delighted I'm going to be selling these things for years. Uh, and I've even been it's even been suggested to me that I go to one of these, um, these, uh, gatherings, these groups, uh, matchbook collectors that come and they, uh, you know, you rent a booth and you sell a bunch of stuff. And that might be smart for me to do not only to, to potentially sell some, but really to just get some, um, some connections to people, uh, learn from other people. And then maybe if I have direct lines to specific collectors, then I have now another avenue to sell through. I don't have to just sell to a random, uh, group and a people who, who may or may not be looking on eBay at any given time, but I could have one person say, Hey man, I look for oil and 
on gas matchbooks uh, anywhere in New Hampshire. <laughs> well, now as I'm looking through, I don't have to wonder if it'll sell. I can send an email directly to that person and potentially sell to them. Uh, so anyhow, guys, this is uh, this is kind of what uh, what we got going here in the month of March. Again, 77 items. I sold things as as little as 99 cents, as you can see here, and I sold uh, probably the most expensive thing I sold was around 17 or 18 hundred dollars this month. But uh, almost 10,000. We today is the last day of the month. If I sell 50 dollars more of stuff today, then uh, then I'll hit 10 grand on the month. So that'd be great. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining. Uh, I hope you guys have a great one. Hopefully you learned a couple of things here. You see the types of things that we're selling. Keep an eye for this stuff. And uh, maybe, just maybe, you can make a buck. Thanks so much, guys. Rusty, rusty, rusty hair.